So last night we had a very crazy finish to a race at Nashville Super Speedway. Ended up locking Joey Logano into the playoffs. Let's talk about the race we had at Nashville and everything that went down with the record-breaking green-white checkers. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also, give me your thoughts on this video. What did you think about the race at Nashville Super Speedway and the very crazy and lengthy finish we ended up having? All right, so last night's race ended up going on a lot longer than I expected it to. I'm not going to lie. I was a little bit under the weather at the end of that race because of how long it went and what happened to Kyle Busch. That upset me for sure. Julian! I don't know where I felt like I get a little drink around. Here, do you, bud? It, wa it was not worth making the video last night. I would have been just rambling it's given me a lot of time to think about the events that unfolded in last night's race at Nashville Super Speedway, which I'd say the race for the most part was okay up until the end. I'd say it was an okay race. Let's start to go through that race that I am talking about. I'd say in the early portions of this race, it seemed like it was pretty difficult to pass for some drivers. Some drivers, if you had a really quick car, were able to make moves. It was very clear early on in this event that the tires didn't really matter and it proved to be the fact even later on in the event as well, which we will get to. It was all about just finding track position or keeping that track position that you have. We had some strategies go into play pretty early, especially when they were hearing that the rain was coming. There was a possibility of it raining after the halfway point which could have potentially ended the race we ended up getting rain around lap 130 on in this event so it was before the halfway break and it was before the end of stage two so the race was not official and it was a downpour we had a downpour at nashville super speedway i'm surprised how quickly they were able to dry that racetrack to be fair it's been hot all weekend so maybe the track wasn't absorbing water like it usually is maybe concrete dries quicker i'm not exactly sure which dries quicker concrete or asphalt the more i think about it i feel like concrete probably dries quicker as well but i'm not exactly sure about that i'm not an expert on that sort of stuff nascar was able to get the track dry in a timely fashion they were able to continue racing and this ended up being like i said this ended up being a lot longer of a race than i expected a very entertaining finish to this event which we will get to momentarily you saw a couple of drivers really standing out at the beginning portion of this race and you saw it you saw around the same couple of drivers at after the rain as well christopher bell i i personally say christopher bell was the best car all race long but he also had track position all race long ended up getting caught up in an accident in the late goings after being put at the back because of varying strategies. Like I said, there was a lot of different strategies in this race because of the ill-timed cautions, because of the rain, because of the craziness we had at the end. Two of these drivers are really fast, and it's just another chapter in their rivalry. And I'm talking about Denny Hamlin and Kyle Larson, who got into it a couple of times in this race. I think one of the big moments was in stage two, they got into it a little bit. And after the checkered flag came out for stage two, Hamlin drove up to Larson, gave him a, a little shot, letting him know he wasn't happy about the way he was racing him. These two are going a little bit back and forth. I'd say it's mainly Hamlin that does the bad. By bad, I mean does the aggressive move on Larson. But Larson has done it too, and he's done it to multiple drivers. These two have a budding rivalry and they're both at the top of their games right now so it's very exciting and interesting to watch especially 
I don't know if they really consider each other friends anymore, but I'd say around a year, maybe two years ago, other than maybe Elliot and Blaney, I would consider these two to be the best friends on the grid. We are going to talk a little bit more about these two in a little bit. A driver that I was actually watching throughout the day, I think they showed me they, they had a lot, a lot of speed, but were just unable to really get that they were in the top five, top 10 most of the day, but I would have loved to seen them leading the race. And that was Ty Gibbs. Ty Gibbs, he was one of the few drivers I just saw out there throughout the day making a bunch of passes and just showed a lot of speed, especially on the longer runs. A really fast number 54. And he was also taken out in that late race madness, Ty Gibbs. A lot of great drivers and strong drivers were taken out at the end of this race. It was really unfortunate to see. I think we should probably get to that end of the race because I think that's why everybody's tuning in to this video or really even watching a lot of videos on the Nashville race. Because like I said, the Nashville race was okay. It wasn't anything noteworthy. It was once again a race where it was really difficult to pass. It was mainly about track position and strategy, which can be good sometimes like I said it was it was an okay race and then the end of this race I I'd say made this into a bad race but at the same time a very entertaining and dramatic finish but like I said not necessary it turned it into a bad race it was kind of embarrassing to a certain degree the way this finished we had a record number of green white checkers we had a record not a record number of laps driven past the allotted finish we went 31 whole laps past the allotted finish of this event we got five green white checkered finishes like i said both of those are new records for the nascar cup series when it comes to the green white checkered format and i i i see a lot of people online i'd, I'd say overreacting a little bit some are saying get rid of green white checkers some are going to say limit it, and I don't think there's a, a win in this scenario for NASCAR because if you keep it the way it is, you're going to get the same complaints with scenarios like this, but then if you limit it to one or limit it to three or whatever you want to limit it to, then there everybody's going to be complaining, oh, we didn't get a, a green finish. They could have kept going. They were going to clean it up. And it's the same thing if they're they take if they take away green white checkers in general. I think most of the fan base will get upset with that. I, me personally, I'd probably like it to be one, maybe two, maybe three at the very most green white checkered finishes. And that was the rule I think at one point where they they allowed only three. I'm not sure what NASCAR should do in this scenario because, like I said, I think it's a lose lose scenario no matter what they decide in this situation the end of that race wasn't their fault as well we'll get into the instance here in a moment but a lot of drivers were just driving over their heads just driving way too aggressively at the end of this event and just were causing incidents that were unnecessary and just depending on what way you look at it in my opinion ruined the end of this event like i said it made it very entertaining but we had a driver win the race. Joey Logano ended up winning the race. What, in my opinion, wasn't even a top 15 car. It was real. It was almost worse. Zane Smith almost won this race. Nothing against Zane Smith, but Zane Smith was running 30th pretty much all race. He's been running 30th to 35th every race this season. If he won that race, guess what? Zane Smith is in the playoffs. Zane Smith wins Rookie of the Year. And it's not deserving at all. I like Zane Smith. This is not me bad-mouthing Zane Smith, but that would have been insane. And honestly, if Zane Smith won that race, I would see some off-season changes when it comes to playoff ruling and a bunch of different things that really could have set the whole sport on its head if Zane Smith won that race. Thankfully, he didn't. Hopefully he can earn a win here very soon. Like I said, I'm a big fan of Zane Smith. But if he won that race, that would have been awful for NASCAR and the Cup Series. All right, let's get to some of these incidents at the end. I think 
the most noteworthy one, the one that I think most people are talking about, is Ross Chastain getting turned around by Kyle Larson on, I think it was the first green-white checkered. Larson just, I watched it live, and I called it out live, and I think a lot of people are saying the exact same thing. And Larson even said it in his interview that he was pretty much trying to move Larson, um, I mean trying to move Hamlin up the racetrack. That's what it looked like. It looked like he was either trying to take out Hamlin or at least move him up the racetrack. And I don't blame the guy. Larson has been dealt a bad hand when it comes to Hamlin many times. I know Larson has also raced Hamlin and others aggressively. But most of the time with this back and forth, Hamlin comes out on top. So I don't I don't really blame the guy for trying to go for it. But if you're going to go for it, get it. Because you ended up taking out Ross Chastain and a couple of other cars. And end, and who knows, if he doesn't do that, maybe we don't get five green-white checkered finishes. It's just, it was real disappointing to see. Like I said, if you're going to take somebody out, take him out. And he completely whiffed on Hamlin. He might have gave Hamlin a slight bump. But it didn't do anything to Hamlin. He ended up wrecking Ross Chastain, who for once was an innocent bystander in all of this, taking out a couple of other drivers in the process was just really unfortunate to see from Kyle Larson and this is just another chapter in the Kyle Larson Denny Hamlin rivalry I think Hamlin's finally beginning to admit that it is a rivalry I'm going to play this clip from Denny Hamlin from actions detrimental this week there was three or four instances this this race so again I you know this will keep going and it, it will not, it will not just keep going. It will continue to get raised because hearing that he was going to be content with just knocking us up into the one, um, you know, that changes the game certainly at the end. So, like I said, this is the latest chapter in the Kyle Larson Denny Hamlin rivalry. But from what it sounds like from Denny Hamlin, he's he's willing to keep this thing going. He was pretty upset about Larson's moves during that race because. I would have. I remember hearing Hamlin talk about in his podcast that Larson was out of control, and honestly, I would almost, I would kind of agree with that. I, I do agree that Larson should have gotten Hamlin back for all the times that Hamlin's gotten him. I, I understand that, but it, it goes back to the point I said earlier. If you're gonna get a guy, get a guy, because Larson just went into turn one with the mission in mind. I'm either going to wreck. Denny Hamlin or at least move him out of the way he didn't do anything to Hamlin ended up taking out Chastain amongst others while you've seen Hamlin get into Larson but it's usually just overly aggressive driving I think is the best way to put it just really rubbing up when it comes to Larson driving him extra aggressively I'd say but at the same time he's not out of control he's not out here getting into other guys just to get into Hamlin. So I get what Hamlin's saying there in his podcast. You should take a listen to the newest edition of Actions Detrimental. So you can get kind of his thoughts and Tyler Reddick's thoughts because Tyler Reddick is a guest on Actions Detrimental this week and they give their thoughts about the finish and what went down with Larson and all that stuff at the end of this race. But just to finish it off, overall, I'd say I'm I'm a little disappointed in Larson's move. I would have been fine if he sent it in there. I mean, I would I probably would have been a little bit upset. That's because I like Hamlin. But at the same time, I would have understood if he'd have sent it in there, got into the back of Hamlin, and sent Hamlin up the racetrack. Larson passes and wins the race. That was probably his idea in doing that, but that did not work out. He ended up wrecking Ross Chastain, who had a good shot at winning the race and i'm also very excited to see what the next chapter could be in this rivalry because according to hamlin he's he's down to continue this rivalry while larson hopes that the rivalry is over we'll have to see what happens in the coming weeks as they head to chicago this week and to stay on larson let's get to i think the very next green white checkered as larson is now restarting on the front row next to Denny Hamlin and right when the green flag comes out he 
runs out of gas or sputters right when he goes ends up costing Kyle Busch the whole outside line ends up getting stacked up Kyle Busch spins around crashes his car ends his day another awful finish for Kyle Busch I think this is four out of the last five or four out of the last six races something like that I do not I do not have the stats right in front of me where Kyle Busch has finished outside the top 30 and today I'd say he probably deserved it he was running outside the top 30 at points outside the top 35 throughout the whole day it might have been the worst race I've ever seen out of Kyle Busch's career and then somehow in the late goings because of strategy and different calls he found himself up in the top 10 all of a sudden making passes maybe the clean air was helping him or maybe they made a bunch of adjustments but all of a sudden at the end of this race seemed like he had decent speed and had a good shot not just at a top five but had a win a much needed win and got taken out because of that a couple other drivers got taken out late because of drivers pushing it on fuel as every driver was running out of fuel here in these last couple of green white checkers which opened up the door for zane smith for joey logano for these other drivers that felt a little bit more confident about them making on making it on fuel which ended up setting up the very last green white checkered where we had a couple of drivers where we weren't sure if they were going to be able to make it on fuel we had chase briscoe and joey logano up at the field up at the front of the field not sure if either of them were going to make it on fuel. Then we had a couple of drivers behind them who were we were pretty confident were going to make it on fuel. I think we had both Zane Smith and I think Corey LaJoy was up there as well. Hosevar might have been up there as well. The Spire cars were really on to something late. We saw a couple of drivers that had golden opportunities at the end of this event if the drivers in front of them running at, ran out of gas. And then you had Tyler, a driver like Tyler Reddick who just came down and got fresh tires, got gas, was able to go to the finish of this event and was flying and just, if he had one more lap, I think he probably would have won this event. We ended up having pretty much a three wide finish across the line with Reddick getting third, Zane Smith getting second, almost got the win because Logano looked like he stumbled on the front stretch maybe that's when his gas tank started to sputter a little bit because on the front straightaway Logano all of a sudden began to slow a little bit and I was like oh Zane Smith is actually going to win this race and he didn't win the race and the two-time champion of Joey Logano locks up his playoff spot a very crazy insane entertaining kind of embarrassing finish to this race it was just full of wrecks full of drivers overdriving the cars it was just really unfortunate to see in the moment i'm i'm a little under the weather just cheering and hollering on about the end of this race the longer i look at it the more i'm a little disappointed with the way it all ended no drivers that were even somewhat competitive finished up near the front except for maybe reddick all the other drivers that were competing for the win all night long and seemed like they had a great shot at the victory ended up either finishing outside the top 10 or you had a Kyle Larson or you had a Ty Gibbs or you had a Christopher Bell three drivers that very well could have won this race all wrecked out finishing behind the wall it was just real unfortunate to see and hopefully they can clean it up heading into the playoffs because we only got a couple of weeks until the playoffs and if we have if we have more races like that there's a good chance we'll end up getting to the 16 winners and there'll be somebody that misses the playoffs that's not supposed to i will always remember martin tricks jr missing the playoffs a couple of years ago because we had so many winners when he was i think second in points so we'll have to see what happens over these next couple of weeks I think I've kind of already gone through my final thoughts a little bit, but just to finish it off, Nashville Super Speedway, overall, I'd say before the Green White Checkers was an okay race and honestly was not that entertaining. 
And then the if you add in the end of this race, it turns it from an okay race to a bad race, but a very entertaining and dramatic finish. But congratulations to Joey Logano. Gets his second win of the year, his first points win. He did, he did win at Wilkesboro in the All-Star event. All three Penske drivers are now locked into the playoffs with wins. Joey Logano has to feel good about that. Has some momentum heading into the playoffs a little bit. We'll have to see what he's able to do over the next couple of weeks. But for someone that was on the bubble and is now locked in because of a bunch of madness that happened at Nashville, it has to feel good for for Joey Logano to not feel that pressure of the playoffs anymore. He's locked in. And I'm excited to see what see Chicago. I'm excited to head to Chicago, the Chicago Street Course next week. It should be a very fun race. I'm really it sounds like at the moment we're probably not going to get any rain, but it's still early on in the week. Those forecasts can change. I really hope it stays dry. Um, I'm cheering on Shane, Shane Van Gisbergen racing in both the Cup Series and the Xfinity Series events this weekend. I'm hoping he can sweep the weekend, go back to back at Chicago, and that there isn't a single drop of rain throughout the weekend. But give me all your thoughts below. What did you think about the race at Nashville Super Speedway? What did you think about the finish? But that'll do it for me. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, aka Racing Boy Short, saying peace.